here it is. Another miracle from China. A 16GB RX GPU. 16GB of VRAM while Team Green offers the RTX 4070 or 3080 Ti with only 12. Increase in VRAM at home has already been done by many. But this is a special case. These guys have actually brought this concept into mass production. The RX 580, which is actually the RX 580 2048SP, which initially was RX 470. And it got 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Is that for real? Here is, by the way, a standard 8 gigabyte RX 580, which we have already tested. And the conclusions we made were quite specific, and I never thought that we would get back to something like this so soon. But today we will try to figure out if 16 gigabytes of VRAM is of any use to a GTX 1060 level GPU, which is actually the lowest tier of gaming performance according to our performance chart. In the meantime, this is MK, and we're gonna be testing an AMD Radeon RX 580, powered with 16 gigabytes of memory. And I will start with trying to answer the question of the day. How this thing could have possibly come into existence? It's no secret that the higher tier RX 400 and 500 series would come with either 4 or 8 gigabytes of video memory. And a clever repairman during the crypto mining boom would offer services increasing video memory when it was no longer enough to mine Ethereum. But 16 gigabytes? These boards don't have the space for so much. Well, the MI6 does. AMD has such a GPU called Instinct, which is designed for productivity tasks mostly. And it has nothing to do with the British intelligence agency, by the way. The MI6 is based on the Polaris 10 chip, which is the same chip that you can find in the regular RXs. But at the same time, it has 16 gigabytes of video memory. But if you think that all that needs to be done is to get an RX 580, solder some extra memory to the PCB, play with the straps and change the BIOS to a modified one from the server GPU, I'll have to upset you. It's not nearly as simple. The GDDR5 memory standard is old. It is more than 10 years old in fact, and the maximum volume per memory chip is 1 GB. Which means that the standard RX card with 8 pads for VRAM chips won't do. On top of that, having 16 pads on one side of the PCB is not a thing either. You can only have up to 12. Which means, yes, this is something along the lines of the RTX 3090, only by AMD, with memory chips located on both sides of the PCB. And this is not something these guys did just for fun, it is a physical limitation of GDDR5. And the original MI6 Instinct most likely had all 16 chips located the same way. This is also confirmed by the marking. All the 16 chips installed here have the same data codes, that is, they come from the same batch. Considering that GDDR5 has been discontinued for a long time now and that there are no other cards with 16 gigabytes of this type of memory, it means that all the chips are taken from an original MI6 Instinct. But the GPU chip here is just as bad as it was on our previous RX card. In fact, this is a chip from an RX 470 which had been used on a couple of other graphics cards before it was changed into the RX 580 2048 SP and overclocked. By the dark color of the compound and the scratched chip and the green texture light, it is clear that the GPU has seen a lot, so I would not expect a long and stable operation from it. But what surprised me was the texture light of the board. Clean, obviously new, without any traces of flux. Just compare it with our previous RX card, which came all in a sticky substance and with swollen capacitors. At first, we even thought that these guys used the original PCB from the MI6 and soldered a used video chip onto it. But now, looking closely at the soldering alloy balls under the GPU and video memory chips, you can see that they are shiny, meaning that they are made of lead, while all major graphics cards manufacturers use matte lead-free alloys. I believe the story of this graphics card is as follows. Some Chinese entrepreneurs got their hands on a bunch of used Instinct GPUs, removed memory chips from them and placed them onto their own PCBs along with some used GPUs. And on the one hand, it's good that the PCB is new, but on the other, no one knows how well they designed the wiring in it. The GPU and memory chips are obviously used, and the former is in a very poor condition. In short, this card is yet another Frankenstein, albeit in a good condition, or at least so it looks, and with new thermal pads. Now as we know what kind of Pokemon we're dealing with, let's get down to it. In 3 Mark, our test subject scored 3600 points, and this is a margin of error below the average result of the regular RX 580 2048 SP. 
the extra 8GB of video memory is not utilized by this benchmark with the default settings. We launched the Superposition benchmark in 8K in order to check the stability of both GPU and video memory. The VRAM utilization is almost 9GB. And although we got only 10 FPS here, it doesn't really matter. And what does matter is the frequency only 800 to 900 megahertz whereas the standard rx cards would turbo boost to 1.2 or 1.4 gigahertz thermal throttling is not a thing here and after 15 minutes of running this test the gpu only reached 65 degrees whoever made this card knew perfectly well that this chip is too old and therefore decided to delay its demise by cutting the TDP of the GPU to just 100 watts. Whereas the standard RX 470 consumes 120 watts, and the Instinct GPU with a full-fledged Polaris chip consumes 150. Our Frankenstein is underpowered and is limited by TGP, which prevents it from turbo boosting to the full. But it's not the way to go, so we added the lacking 150 watts to it via MSI Afterburner. Of course, this caused the heating to increase to 77 degrees when running superposition, but this is still within the normal range. But the GPU now boosts up to 1.2 GHz as expected. If you want to get such a card for yourself, god forbid, it's worth remembering that overclocking it like that is not safe. And a 7-year-old chip may not survive such severe trials. And what about the memory? The superposition benchmark actually loads it pretty well. I finally got a decent thermal imager. This is a Chinese-made Infiray P2 Pro. It is available for both Android and iPhone. I plugged it into my phone, launched the app, and it's done. The card comes with a completely useless metal backplate, which doesn't touch the chips through thermal pads in any way, so we can safely remove it and run our measurements. As a result of our 15-minute test, the memory on the back of the board is heated above 80 degrees. By the standards of modern GDDR6X, it's okay. But for GDDR5, these temperatures are considered critical. And by the way, they could be reduced. But alas, the Chinese decided that it's not worth bothering. In our case, we are mostly interested in the maximum performance of the card, so we will continue testing it with the full TDP. Perhaps unable to withstand such a load, our specimen will depart right during a test. Let's see. The first thing that comes to mind seeing a card with as much as 16GB of VRAM is of course a 4K test. It is quite obvious that a GTX 1060 level GPU can't handle such a resolution in modern games even at the lowest graphics preset, so we will have to resort to all sorts of upscaling techniques. We will turn on FSR to ultra performance so that the rendering resolution is about 720p, but at the same time we will set texture resolution to ultra in every game in order to load the VRAM as much as possible. And of course, in parallel, we will test the card in the more realistic Full HD resolution, among other things, in order to compare it with our regular 8GB RX 580-2048 SP. As our tradition goes, let's begin with Cyberpunk, which has not yet been updated to version 2.0 and runs well on an old RX card, however at low graphic settings and with FSR at performance. The picture in this mode is certainly a bit blurry and the memory utilization is only 5GB, but the average frame rate in the benchmark is noticeably higher than 60, so it's absolutely comfortable to play. And you can even drag a couple of sliders to the medium level or set FSR to quality. The result of our 8GB RX 580 from our previous video is slightly worse, 60fps on average. Although the chip is the same, the frequency is the same, and the video memory is not utilized to the full in both cases. Moving on to 4K. We got pretty low expectations about this server level RX card, so we started off with low graphic settings with FSR at ultra performance, which reduces the rendering resolution to 720p. But here we set the textures to high, we still want to somehow reveal the potential of the 16GB of video memory, however this was not the case. The overall frame rate was quite playable, about 40 and the picture is not as terrible as it might seem, but the video memory utilization didn't even reach 7GB. That is, the standard 8GB RX 470 is actually capable of albeit formal 4K resolution in Cyberpunk. The only case when we manage to get close to the utilization of 8GB of video memory is when driving around the city in 4K with high-res textures and FSR at ultra performance. This is the most demanding location in the game with a bunch of textures, but even in this case, the standard amount of video memory is enough, and there is no use in 16GB. At the same time, look at the trail the car is leaving behind. There are too few frames per second to get enough information to build intermediate frames correctly. But I know what needs to be done. Let's launch Far Cry 6. 
The game is interesting because it has the ability to enable HD textures that require more than 10 GB of video memory. At first, we just tested it at high graphics settings with standard textures to compare it with the 8 GB RX 580. The results were quite close, 55 and 53 frames per second, while the chips were boosted the same way again, and video memory utilization reached 6.5 GB, which is still not even close to 8 GB, let alone 16. Ok, what about 4K? To begin with, low graphic settings and standard textures, but the environment at ultra. The FSR setting is of course at performance mode. However, we only got the first version of it here, so the picture quality leaves much to be desired. But you can still play without problems, 53 FPS on average, while the video memory is utilized by 7.5 GB, so 8 GB would be enough here. And now, let's have some fun. Let's download the 30 GB of extra quality. We enabled HD textures, switched to 4K and got 10.5 GB of video memory loaded. And this is while the rest of the graphic settings are at low. This is something that the 8 GB version of the card would barely handle. But our server grade RX card is feeling ok. And even with some margin. With HD textures at high, even in full HD, the video memory utilization would be more than 10 GB. But if you turn on FSR performance, the picture turns into a highly detailed blur, if that makes any sense. Where else can we try to load our VRAM to more than 8GB? In Forza Horizon 5, of course. At high graphic settings without FSR, in Full HD, the VRAM utilization is not even close, 5 to 6 GB. And the frame rate is quite playable, about 55 FPS according to the benchmark. So it's not interesting. Let's enable 4K, low graphic settings, but the textures of the environment on cars are extremely high. And we will use FSR at ultra performance so that we could have at least somewhat of a playable frame rate. And yes, we got almost 9GB of video memory utilized. The card heated up to 72 degrees and at the same time didn't drop the frequency. The final result is almost 40 FPS. Now let's destroy some Soviet robots in the alternative 20th century. Atomic Heart is based on Unreal Engine 4 and has excellent graphics, which of course affects the utilization of video memory. At high settings in Full HD, the game will need about 6.5GB. This game is fairly well optimized. So when running in this mode, the game renders 40 to 50 FPS even in a demanding city location. Let's try out 4K. Maybe this time we will break the 8GB barrier? Alas, no. Here again the bottleneck is the GPU itself. To get playable 40 FPS, you have to set FSR to ultra performance and the graphic settings to lowest, with the exception of textures. In this case, video memory utilization is even slightly less than in Full HD with a high preset, about 6GB. Neither do we expect a huge utilization of video memory from the new space saga called Starfield. The game is based on an almost 15 year old engine, and with a frankly mediocre picture at low graphic settings in Full HD with FSR 2 enabled, it manages to render about 30 frames per second in a simple location. The video memory utilization is about 6.5GB, so an 8GB RX 580 would have coped just as badly. The updated Witcher 3 has absorbed, among other things, a lot of mods for high quality textures that have definitely increased video memory utilization. But not nearly as much as for the 16GB card to be utilized to the full. Even in 4K with exorbitant plus textures, video memory utilization doesn't even reach 8GB. Ok, let's stop beating around the bush. We know for sure a game that will love to consume video memory as much as Chrome loves consuming RAM, and without any HD textures mind you. I'm talking about the PC port of The Last of Us, a game that pleased gamers with excellent optimization. And although the game has been patched up recently, it's still way too demanded for a game with such graphics. The textures of the landscape, effects, texture loading speed and character quality are at highest. The rest is at lowest, and FSR at ultra performance. That is, the real rendering resolution is only 360p. As a result, our GPU managed to run the game at 50 uneven FPS and video memory utilization exceeded 9GB. You can even go up to 2K, keeping the same settings. This will increase the load on the video memory by a couple of hundred megabytes, leaving the FPS at a playable level above 40. Of course, this is not the only game that the RX 580 can run and which would require more than 8GB of VRAM. You can recall Doom Eternal, a game perfectly optimized for AMD GPUs, so even the old RX 580 can run it in 4K with low graphic settings and dynamic scaling. And we can also set the texture quality to Nightmare. As a result, the frame rate is somewhere about 60, but the video memory is utilized by more than 9GB. 
and at the end, a couple of eSports games. They are usually well optimized for low tier hardware, so even in 4K, they should run just fine. In Dota, for example, our GPU rendered 80 to 90 FPS at Ultra, but only about 4 GB of video memory was used. In World of Tanks, the situation is much worse. At medium-low settings with textures at Ultra in the HD client, you can get a comfortable 70 FPS on average, while 5.5 GB of VRAM is used. The built-in benchmark and core scores almost 14,000 points in Full HD at highest settings, and this is 1,000 points less than the standard RX 580 meaning that 16 GB of VRAM is excessive for eSports even at the highest settings. I think the conclusions are obvious here. Without a powerful video chip, 16 GB of video memory in games is almost always useless. It's high time for good old RX 580 to retire, along with some of the Xeon processors. Today's games that lack optimization are overwhelming for this GPU, even with all these upscaling techniques enabled. And even if you specifically set the texture quality to ultra in order to increase the load and video memory, still in the vast majority of modern games, this is not enough to go beyond 8GB in 4K. But why with other, more powerful GPUs, 10 and even 15GB of VRAM can be utilized easily? It's simple really, video memory is loaded not only with textures. There exist many graphic settings that will require a couple of extra gigabytes of VRAM. But in the case of the RX 470, they are simply not available. They are too much for this GPU to handle. Here we can only increase texture quality, which, provided that there is enough VRAM, doesn't impact your frame rate whatsoever. This card will definitely go down in my history of the dumbest purchases. Even the regular Chinese 8GB RX 580, which I also did not recommend for purchase, would run these games at the same level, and it will cost 2 or even 3 times cheaper. The only use case that makes sense for this graphics card is productivity workload. For example, multi-step image generation in stable diffusion can easily require over 12 GB of video memory. Yes, this is the cheapest card with 16 GB of VRAM. But with a used GPU in poor condition, used memory chips, the most basic cooling system and the lowest quality PCB. For example, this 8 GB card has stability issues that started literally after a couple of weeks of playing World of Tanks. And it's one thing to risk 30 to 40 dollars, and another almost 120, for which you can get a GTX 1660 Super or even TI in a much better condition and with much higher performance. This was MK, my name is Mikhail Krashin, I'll see you again, bye.